What's up, everybody? We're back, you know, the Apollo Bros. And we're here to show you another banging work from the 250. Today, we're about to show you this insane Buddhist temple in Cambodia, which is constructed between 1116 to 1150 CE, being built of stone masonry and sandstone. In the city of Siam Rep in Cambodia resides a glorious Angkor Wat, which is an enormous Buddhist temple spread over 400 anchors and is said to be the largest religious monument in the world. French explorer Henry Mahout said after he discovered the site to be grander than anything left to us by Roman Greece. This compliment is due to the Buddhist temple's design to be modeled to represent Mount Meru, which is said to be the home of the gods according to Hindu and Buddhist faiths, with the five towers intended to recreate the five peaks of Meru. The temple was created using the Khmer's unique architectural style using sandstone and stone masonry. Angkor Wat is a religious monument now highly associated with the Buddhist faith, but initially it was designed as a Hindu temple, reflecting the religious affiliation of King Suryavarman II. However, by the end of the 12th century, it was really known as a Buddhist site. It was dedicated to Vishnu and served as a bridge between the heavens and earth as the five towers there represented the Hindu cosmos serving as an axis mundi. Now it is used by Buddhist monks as a place of worship. Angkor Wat's main story is prevalent in its carved bas relief images depicting a multitude of different Hindu stories with over 1200 square meters of it. The most important chronicle depicted tells the story of the churning of the ocean of milk which is the tale of the beginning of time and the creation of the universe, also telling the tale of good overcoming evil. As you can see in the picture, we have Devas, or gods, having what seems to be a tug-of-war match with Asuas, or demons, this being in order to reclaim order and power for the gods who have lost it. Now, this tug-of-war type activity is to release the elixir of life, which is a need to reclaim that peace and order. Once this action is finished, there will be a battle between the two to attain it. The central figure is Vishnu, who is representing Mount Mandara, as the gods and the demons are using the Maga, or the serpent king, as the divine rope. As this churning of the milk is happening, we see it creates these figures called celestial maidens, or Asparas, who are carved in relief throughout the whole temple. More specifically in the image is Indra, the Vedic god, who is considered to be the king of all gods, descending from the heavens to catch the elixir being released. When we look at Angkor Wat from an aerial view, we see the temple is protected by a large protective moat that surrounds the whole complex. Also, we see the temple is comprised of three galleries, with a central sanctuary marked by those five towers. This temple is dedicated to Vishnu, who is one of the three principal gods of the Hindu pantheon, with Shiva and Brahma being the others. Vishnu is known as the protector, and King Suryavadman II, who was the major patron of this work, his name translates to protector of the sun. This type of project would have likely needed around 300,000 workers, these consisting of architects, construction workers, masons, sculptors, etc. Angkor Wat took over 30 years to finish, but was sadly never completed. But as for a cross-cultural connection, Angkor Wat and the Lakshmana Temple are both architectural representations of the Hindu cosmos with the five towers in each work representing the peaks in Mount Meru. They also serve as a axis mundi by symbolically connecting the earth with the heavens.